Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Uh, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine today unveiled tentative distribution dates for the potential COVID-19 vaccine in Ohio. Uh, so I'm gonna break down a little bit about what he said, who might get them first. And today is actually the last day Lucas County, seventh through 12th grade students were attending classes in person under the county's health order. So I'm gonna remind you all exactly what that order is, but I'm seeing some people tune in here, great. So I can just dive in throughout this whole live that I'm doing, feel free to ask your questions. I'm just gonna go through the nuts and bolts I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have, but a lot is up in the air right now. So we'll see what we can answer. So right now, like I said, the work, the plan is a work in progress. The federal government has made it clear to state leaders that they won't know for sure how many vaccines are coming with each shipment until it's closer to the expected date of their arrival. So here is what we do know. Who is getting vaccinated first? DeWine said phase 1A is expected to start mid-December, so in just a few weeks here, uh, with the first doses going to, I've got the list behind me, healthcare workers and personnel involved in the care of COVID-19 patients, EMS responders, vulnerable individuals who live together in close proximity and those caring for them. And there's uh, some examples here I'll lay out for you. Uh, that might include residents and staff at nursing homes, residents and staff at assisted living facilities, parents and staff at state psychiatric hospitals, people with intellectual disabilities or mental illness who live in group homes along with those staff members, and residents and staff at Ohio Veterans Homes. Now I already see some questions coming in, so I'll pause and see if I can answer anything right away. I do see someone asking about a stay-at-home order. No, there has not been one. DeWine has not mentioned anything about that. He did say today, in the press conference that more might need to be done. He mentioned that the curfew that he has and the mask mandate he thinks has helped, but things are getting worse. And so he said, at this point, we do have to do more, but he didn't mention anything like a stay at home order. So don't, don't worry about that just yet. Let me see. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and talk to you a little bit about these dates. So right now, all of these dates are subject to change, including the doses that are coming in each shipment, because again, the federal government has explained that we really won't know exactly how much we're getting until it's closer to the shipment date. And even, like I said, these dates are all kind of general right now. So around December 15th, DeWine says he's expecting 9,750 Pfizer doses for Ohio hospitals, and then an additional 88,725 doses for Walgreens and CVS, which will then be distributing those to congregate care settings like nursing homes. So that will be the first round of COVID-19 doses Ohio will see. Again, we'll see some more on December 22nd. We'll get 201,000 of Moderna doses for 98 Ohio hospitals and 108 health departments. And then we'll get another 123,000 Pfizer vaccine doses for CVS and Walgreens to again be distributed to congregate care facilities. Um, I do wanna stop and clarify though that nothing has been approved quite yet. This is all contingent on these vaccines getting approved by the FDA. And I'll walk you through a little bit about that process in just a little bit. But after the two December 22nd shipments, several days after that, they didn't give us any sort of date. They're expecting 148,000 Pfizer doses and 89,000 Moderna doses. They didn't specify exactly where those might go. But in terms of the general population, it's still too soon to tell when the vaccine will be widely available. So right now, all we know uh, are that they're going to be going to frontline workers, healthcare workers, and people in congregate care facilities because they are most at risk. So I'm going to see if I can see these. Um, is it true they're talking about paying us to take the shot? Um, that was one proposal by, I was a formal pres former presidential candidate. He proposed sending out $1,500 stimulus checks to people who got the vaccine as an incentive, but nothing has been voted on or more seriously talked about. It's just something that's been thrown out there. We'll definitely let you know if something more solid comes around with that. Let me see. Are these vaccinations mandatory? Nothing has been mandatory, made mandatory. As of yet, uh, that might be something that you look at with your employer. I don't know what specific employers might do, but nothing about mandatory vaccinations has been discussed yet. 
let me see. Okay, I'm not seeing anything else. It's kind of hard to see on my screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. I'm just gonna remind you all about the current Lucas County Health Order that impacts schools because today is actually the last day that seventh through 12th grade students in Lucas County schools were able to go in person. So some schools have decided to also move K through six students virtual, but that order doesn't require it. The order does say extracurricular activities will not be allowed in school buildings during this time. So that time period is from today. Today was the last day for in-person classes, and then they can return as it stands right now, January 11th. I do wanna say the health department made clear that just because they've issued this order, it doesn't mean that they can't go back on it. So say in the next couple of days, Lucas County really starts to turn around in terms of the data, they could always rescind that and let kids go back to school earlier. But as it stands right now, school, uh, kids will be returning to school in person January 11th. Um, and as a reminder, while it's not in order, Lucas County is under a stay at home advisory, which means they're urging people to really only leave home for essentials, uh, work, school, medical care, groceries, trips to the pharmacy, picking up food, that sort of thing. And again, that's just an advisory. It is not in order in Lucas County. And one last thing that I do wanna update you on, just because it's something that we've been covering all week, uh, Lucas County health officials had predicted that Lucas County would go on the watch list, which means they would be at risk of turning purple on the state's coronavirus map. However, when we got the update yesterday, that did not happen. Lucas County has stayed in the red. They have not been put on the watch list. And last week, Wood County actually was placed on that watch list, so they could have turned purple yesterday, but they didn't. They were taken off the watch list and they stayed in red as well. So that is a little bit encouraging to see for our local counties. Now I'm gonna try and see some more questions here and then I'm gonna do a quick recap because I know I kind of blew through some of this information and it's good to understand. Oh, and I did wanna talk about vaccine safety. So what's coming up and how it gets approved. So once I look through here, I'll remind you that. Let me see. Oh. All right. I'm going to just go through this again. It is kind of hard for me to see these questions. If I don't get to yours, I'll try my best to answer them once I log off here. But let me go through the vaccine safety discussion first um, before I get back into my recap here. So on today's press conference with DeWine, infectious disease specialist with Ohio Health, Dr. Joe Gastaldo said that collectively, both trials prioritize safety in the highest scientific testing methods and have enrolled about 175,000 people from diverse populations. Those are for the Pfizer and Moderna candidates for the COVID-19 vaccine. So on December 10th, which is just six days away, Pfizer will have its FDA review. Its data will be examined by non government experts. And if it's approved by the FDA, the data will then go to another group of independent experts through the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, their advisory committee for the immunization practices. Um, and both of those meetings are actually open to the public. So I wanted to let you all know, I know the vaccine has been something people have been worried about. Uh, so these meetings, these reviews are available to the public. So you can watch all of that and listen to their questions. Um, but once the vaccine is approved by the FDA, and once it's recommended by the CDC, it will go out for people to receive. So once that's all done, again, Ohio is expecting to get its first shipment of the Pfizer vaccine, should all go well, December 15th. So I'm going to go through who gets it first one more time. So phase 1A is expected to start mid-December just right around the corner here. Uh, and the first doses are going to healthcare workers and personnel involved in caring for COVID-19 patients, EMS responders, and vulnerable individuals who live together in close proximity and the people who care for them. So he listed some examples. I'll read them off to you now. Residents and staff at nursing homes, residents and staff at assisted living facilities, patients and staff at state psychiatric hospitals, people with intellectual disabilities or mental illness who live in group homes along with their staff, and residents and staff at Ohio Veterans Home. So they are the first on the list to get the vaccine once it comes out. Um, when do people get the vaccine who are old but not in a nursing care facility? That is a really good question. Um, DeWine wasn't able to go any further than this. The focus currently 
is on healthcare workers because they are right there in the thick of it and concrete care facilities because with everyone living in such close quarters, especially in nursing homes where it is an elderly population, that really runs a higher risk of transmission spreading and spreading fast. So that's why their top priority. After that, he really hasn't laid out a timeline. So for the older population just in general or the general public, healthy young individuals, we don't know when that's coming. But as soon as we learn more, I will definitely keep you updated. Great question. So with that, I'm gonna go through some of these dates here. So on December 15th, we are expected in Ohio to get 9,750 Pfizer doses for Ohio hospitals specifically, and then a whopping 88,725 doses for Walgreens and CVS, and those doses will then be distributed to nursing homes and other congregate care facilities. On December 22nd, we're expected to get our first dose of the Moderna option. We should get around 201,900 doses of the Moderna vaccine, and that will go to 98 Ohio hospitals and 108 health departments. And then we'll also get another 123,000 Pfizer vaccine doses, which will again go to CVS and Walgreens to be shipped out to nursing homes and other congregate care facilities. And then several days after that, they did not give us a ballpark date, but they said several days after December 22nd, we should be getting another 148,000 Pfizer doses and another 89,000 Moderna doses didn't specify where they're going, but I'm assuming it'll stick pretty close to the plan before that. And like I said, in terms of the general population, people outside of these groups, we don't know exactly when it will be distributed to other people. Now, let me see how many people will see. Side effects. That is a great question. I did make note of that. They said so far the side effects that they're seeing are Miles, you'll have like a sore arm maybe, or you just might feel a little bit crummy, you know, um, similar to how you might feel after taking a flu vaccine. Let me see. I don't think I put it in my notes, but the doctor, the infectious disease specialist who is on, he said that that's really common when you're getting a vaccine in general, because the point of the vaccine is that you want your immune system to be you know, woken up a little bit to be stimulated. So you might be getting those just a day where you feel off kilter. But so far, again, this is preliminary, but so far there haven't been any extreme reactions, just the normal soreness. But again, it is all preliminary, but they've tested um, a lot of people here. I have the number, I believe. Uh, yeah, between the two, they've enrolled 175,000 people from diverse populations. Um, so that's, those both trials have prioritized, prioritized safety and the highest scientific testing methods with those people for their trials. So I, I hope that helps a little bit. Let me see. Do we have to get the vaccine every year? John, that is a good question as well. I, I don't think they know that yet. I don't think they know enough about the virus, I know that with the Pfizer vaccine, at least, it comes in two doses, um, but that's just for the one season. So you'd take one shot and then a few, few weeks later, you'd get the second dose, but they haven't really said anything about if it's going to be seasonal or not. Let me see. Is it mandatory for it to be taken? As of right now, no, there haven't been any discussions about it being um, mandatory or anything. Some employers, especially in the healthcare industry, might require it, but that's gonna be up to an individual basis. Um, but so far, it's not mandatory. Let me see. All right, I'm gonna, ah, there we go. I am going to just go through again the safety information that we got from Ohio Health Dr. Joe Gestaldo. I went through again how many people that they tested in the trials, but on December 10th, if you are skeptical, skeptical about this, this might be information you would like to know. On December 10th, Pfizer will have its FDA review and its data will be examined by non-government experts. So this is open to the public. Both the FDA review and the CDC review is open for the public to watch. So we will be figuring out how we can get that to you. Uh, I don't know if we will be able to, but that's what we're working on right now. But 
it is available for the public to watch. So there, the Pfizer vaccine through the FDA will be reviewed by non-government experts. And if it's approved, it will go on to the CDC. And if it's recommended then by the CDC, it will go out for people. They're going to be going through all of this data with a fine tooth comb to make sure that it's safe. It was also explained that the procedures to approve this vaccine, to go through all of that, have been the same as vaccines in the past. It's just been more efficient due to Operation Warp Speed to try and get the vaccine out in a safe and efficient manner. So that's what was explained to us. Again, that is through Ohio Health Dr. Joe Gestaldo. I have information on our website as well with what he explained. Let me see. I'm not seeing, again, it is a little hard to see on my phone, but I'm not seeing any more questions. I went through the dates, which all of this information is again on our website if you need to reference it. I know you're not gonna be able to memorize dates and doses and all of that, but if you are interested, it is available for you there. Mostly, just to sum it up, people who will be getting it first, healthcare workers, people who live and work in congregate care facilities, EMS responders, those are gonna be the people who get this vaccine first. And if you're in Lucas County, I'll give you another quick reminder here. Let's see if I can get the slide up. So Lucas County Health Department did issue a health order um, requiring students in seventh through 12th grades to go virtual for school. So that kind of goes into effect today. Today was the last day that students were able to attend in person. So some schools have decided to continue and move their K through six schools online as well but they didn't have to do that per the order. Um, the order does also say extracurricular activities will not be allowed in school buildings during this time. Some schools have decided to kind of find that loophole and have practices and things of that nature in off-campus settings. Uh, and then the health department has made clear that they can cancel the order at any time. So this is just something they put out there just because it lasts until January 11th doesn't mean that they can't rescind it before then if the situation does improve. And again, as a reminder, while it's not in order, we are under, in Lucas County, a stay-at-home advisory. So the Lucas County Health Department is advising that people only leave home for essentials. You know, the grocery store, medical emergencies, going to the pharmacy, that sort of thing. So, and you know, I will end on this because it's at least an encouraging note here. Um, Lucas County health experts had believed that Lucas County would be put on the watch list this week, which would put them at risk of turning purple. That didn't happen. So Lucas County stays in the red. We are not on the watch list. And last week, Wood County had been on the watch list and they could have turned purple on the state's coronavirus map yesterday, but they did not either. They were removed from the watch list and they will stay in red. So that is a little bit encouraging there. I am, I'll see if I have a couple more questions and then I'm gonna log off here. Okay. Okay, I'm not seeing anything right now. I'll go back so I'm not just staring at you through the screen. Again, I have all of this information on our website right now if you wanna reference it. Um, but with all of that, I hope you have a happy weekend.